One of the most important aspects of sound when it relates to human hearing is the subject of loudness and the decibel scale that's usually used to measure loudness. Now this is a very basic decibel scale. Engineers have several more refined scales such as decibel A, decibel B, decibel C, decibel X, um, numerous weightings of decibel scale. I'm not getting into any of that. I'm just doing the most basic theory. So first of all, whatever theory I'm developing here is only for a point source. And the point source that's radiating in all directions equally, and the proper word for that is isotropic. So an isotropic point source, uh, which, which could be something like your loudspeaker, except the loudspeakers are usually directional. So this is more general than that. So very special um, situation would be going in certain directions. So assuming that you have a point source, a good example of a point source actually is for light. The sun is a good point source of light for the earth. Think of examples like that. So if you are a certain distance away from the point source, the point source is going to have a certain power, P, and you're going to be able to hear something at a certain distance away. The physical principle that helps you determine what you're hearing is called the intensity. So the intensity of sound, I, is defined as the power of the point source divided by the spherical area, 4 pi r squared, at your distance of listening. So imagine you have a big spherical bag that covers this point source, then the area of that sphere is the denominator of this. Intensity is measured in units of watts per square meter because power is measured in watts and area in meters squared. <clears throat> now sound has an interesting feature. Human beings can hear a wide variety of sounds. Uh, I believe the theoretical value for human beings is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which means that you have a big range, a range of nearly a thousand 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So you need a scale that's not linear to capture all the um, niceties of all the frequencies you're hearing. And that's why the decibel scale is a logarithmic scale. Let me write what that decibel definition is. The loudness beta of sound is defined as 10 decibels times the logarithm to base 10. I'll, I'll stop writing base 10 very soon. I'll write it now. Of the intensity of sound you're hearing defined, divided by what's called a threshold intensity. The threshold intensity is different for every animal. Uh, for human beings, that threshold is fixed at I naught equals 10 to the minus 12 watts per square, square meter. Now that's an incredibly small number. It means your, uh, your ear is so sensitive it can hear a trillionth of a watt per square meter. Then you may wonder, well, how, how much can I bear? How much can my, um, my poor ear bear? It turns out not much at all. The threshold for pain is one watt per square meter. And that might seem incredible because uh, people sometimes play music systems that have hundreds of watts. So you may think, wow, um, how is it that you need just one watt per square meter to get this pain effect? Well, that's how hearing works. It's highly nonlinear. It's a nonlinear scale. And by the way, you should not trust all those wattage that people put in music systems. They just put it out there to impress you and make you buy it. A true wattage of a music system is a completely different subject I won't get into right now. Let's find out the betas for the threshold of hearing. Uh, beta naught, I'll call that. What's that going to be? It's 10 dB times the log of I naught over I naught. Well, the log of 1 to any base is 0. So that's going to be 0 decibels. It means that you can hear where at the threshold of hearing, your loudness is 0 decibel. By the way, for human beings, it's 10 to the minus 12. For cats, it's 10 to the minus 14. 
So cats can hear 100 times better than you at the low end. So what you think of as zero dB for you is 20 dB for the cat, which is pretty, pretty loud for an animal of that size. What about beta pain? How big does beta get if you're in pain? Let's figure that out. It's 10 dB log of eye pain. Well, eye pain is one watt per square meter divided by I naught, which is 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter. The watts per square meter cancel out. And so I'm gonna get 10 dB times log of I can bring the 10 to the minus 12 upstairs, so that's 10 to the 12. And using the power rule of logarithms, that's 12 times, so that's 120 dB log 10 to base 10, which is just one. So uh, I, I just wanna, uh, since there's so much logarithms involved, so I just wanna create a little log corner here for you to review this at your own time. So I'll call this log corner. Some popular things about logarithm that you should know are, this applies to any base, log x to the power m is m log x. The other thing is log x times y is log x times uh, plus log y. Similarly, log x divided by y is log x minus log y, what else do we have? Uh, then we have this thing here, uh, log of one to any base, a is gonna be zero, and then finally log of a to base a, for example, log of 10 to base 10 is one. So these are the properties of logarithms that you should be quite comfortable with to work with decibels. Let's do a small example of decibels. And this example also illustrates the power of wearing earplugs. A lot of you go to concerts or are in other noisy situations. This example will really bring home the importance of wearing earplugs because it turns out that earplugs do an amazing job of protecting you. So here I have earplugs that I favor. It's very soft and uh, cushiony. Doesn't spoil your um, ears when you, when you put it in your ears. So it, it does say here that noise reduction rating known as NRR is 32 decibels. Now that should not be taken literally because that's a frequency dependent thing. It's 32 decibels weighted over all the frequencies, okay? So it's approximately zero to 30 is what you should really trust. So I'll take 30 to be the, um, if you properly insert it, 30 decibels is how much the sound reduces at your location. And I suppose you've seen this. I, I got this from a local grocery store like Wegmans. You, you can get it anywhere at Walgreens or other places too. <clears throat> so let's do an example involving the... And I'll, I'll just make this up as I go along. Let's imagine that you like jet engines a lot and you go to a show where different jet engines are displayed. And these jet engines, just to impress the audience, are going at full speed. So they are really, um, they're, they're attached to the ceiling, but they're going at the full throttle, okay? So it's very loud. It's so loud that when you are at a distance of 100 meters, you can barely stand it. So you're at the threshold of pain at a distance of 100 meters. Now, you wear one of those earplugs I showed you. Remember that earplug takes off 30 decibels from your, um, from your hearing intensity, from the loudness. So you're wearing a 30 dB earplugs. Now the question is, after wearing those earplugs, how close can you go to the, to the jet engine? So this problem is uh, very simply solved like this. The original intensity I sub I that you experience at this location should be the threshold of pain, which is one watt per square meter. So that's gonna be one W per M squared. And that's also equal to the power of the jet engine, which I'll call simply P, divided by 
4 pi times the distance squared. I'm using here the isotropic point source formula. Imagining this jet engine is a point. It really is not. But that's the assumption I'm making. Times 100 squared. I'm going to just use SI units, so I won't pay attention to um, that so much. So P is going to be 4 pi times 100 squared. Let's save that equation because we'll need it soon. Now when you wear the 30 dB earplugs, at this location now you'll only hear 90 dB. So you can keep going closer and closer till you get the pain again, till you hear 120 again. Now if you open your earplugs at that point, you're actually going to be at a location where the intensity is, uh, where the loudness is 120 plus 30 because the, the 30 was being taken off. So you'll be actually be at a place where it's 150. So the new beta final is going to be 150 dB and by the formula for the loudness that's equal to 10 dB times log to base 10 of the final intensity over the threshold of hearing for human beings. All right, let's work with this. 10 and 50, uh, 150 cancel to give me 15. So I get 15 equals log to base 10 of IF divided by I naught. Now this is converted into exponential speak as follows. 10 to the 15 equals IF over I naught. That's the connection between exponentials and logarithms. Okay. The next step is to multiply both sides by I naught. So IF equals 10 to the 15 times I naught, which is 10 to the minus 12, the threshold of um, hearing for human beings. So uh, now I'll start putting the units. And that's going to be 10 to the 3 watts per square meter. So you can already see it's pretty huge. 10 to the uh, 3 watts per square meter would completely blow your hearing if you remove the earplugs because the threshold of pain is 1 watt per square meter. So you're able to go so close to the jet engine that the threshold, it's 1,000 times the threshold of pain intensity. That's the amazing thing about wearing earplugs. Now let's find out, the last thing we need to do is find out where you can be. So the final intensity, IF, is also equal to the power of the jet engine, which remains the same regardless of where you are, divided by 4 pi times the new distance squared. Now I've already told you what P is, so let me put that in there. It's 4 pi times 100 squared divided by 4 pi times r squared. And all that has to be equal to IF, which is 10 cubed. Okay, now that tells me that r squared equals 100 squared, which is 10 to the 4, divided by 10 cubed. That's almost amazing. r squared is 10, that's 10 meters, meters squared, which means r is the square root of 10 meters. A square root of 10 is approximately pi, pi meters. And pi meters is about 10 feet. So you've gone from being 330 something feet from the jet engine where you experience pain to now being just 10 feet from the jet engine. It's highly ill advised by the way to go 10 feet close to a jet engine for other reasons because those fans are going at a tremendous rate and I guess just the suction and uh, things like that could probably suck you inside the jet engine so that's not advisable in any uh, in any circumstance so please don't uh, that's my disclaimer for this video don't try this out in real life by going near a, a jet engine like that or a rocket launch um, so you know even if you can go really close to a rocket launch it's highly ill-advised because the it is said that the saturn V rocket launch it's one of the most loudest things that uh, human beings have ever done aside from atomic explosions. The rocket launch was so loud that grass was incinerated within one mile radius. So even if, you ca if your calculation tells you you could be 300 meters from the rocket, don't do that because you could be immediately burned to a crisp if you go near those high, uh, high powered things. The, the intensity of sound is so, so loud for those things like rocket launches that um, tons of concrete 
have to be put into the launching pad to just absorb the sound energy.